Welcome to Health Investigations. I'm your host, Rebecca Barbosa, and in this very first episode, we're diving into a crucial question. Are we testing babies too late for iron deficiency? According to the World Health Organization, iron deficiency is the leading nutritional cause of anemia and one of the most widespread deficiencies worldwide. When it comes to babies, the stakes are even higher. Iron deficiency doesn't just cause fatigue, it can impair brain development, slow growth, and create long-term health challenges that extend well beyond infancy. In today's episode, we'll unpack what iron deficiency really is, how it differs from anemia, why ferritin matters just as much as hemoglobin, and why early testing might be the key to prevention rather than crisis management. This podcast is for education only and not a substitute for medical advice. If you have concerns about your baby's iron or health, please consult your pediatrician. Let's start with the basics. Iron deficiency means the body doesn't have enough stored iron. Iron is essential because the body uses it to make hemoglobin, the protein in red blood cells that carries oxygen. Iron deficiency anemia happens when that shortage has already reduced hemoglobin levels. So what actually defines low iron status? The official threshold for deficiency is a ferritin concentration below 12 microgram per liter. However, many researchers argue this cutoff is too low for infants, since optimal neurodevelopment and immune function appear to require levels closest to 50 microgram per liter. At birth, cord ferritin which reflects the newborn's iron stores transfer from the mother through the umbilical cord should ideally exceed 70 microgram per liter. A 2022 narrative review titled Iron Deficiency During the First 1,000 Days of Life, Are We Doing Enough to Protect a Developing Brain? reported that infants born with core ferritin below approximately 70 to 76 microgram per liter demonstrated measurable neurophysiological disturbances within the first 24 to 48 hours of life, particularly in the auditory system. Similarly, a 2022 study in Acta Pediatrica concluded that infants between three and seven months of age with ferritin concentrations under 51 microgram per liter were more likely to exhibit delayed motor development. This finding suggests that even values well above the classic deficiency cutoff of 12 microgram per liter may still place infants at risk during this critical window of growth and brain development. When it comes to hemoglobin, the World Health Organization defines anemia in infants under five years as a hemoglobin level before 11 grams per deciliter. Mild anemia is defined as 10 to 10.9 grams per deciliter. Moderate anemia as 7 to 9.9 grams per deciliter and severe anemia as anything below seven grams per deciliter. The biggest risk group is uh, premature babies. Most of a baby's iron stores are transferred from mother to baby in the last trimester, especially the final weeks of pregnancy. If a baby is born early, they miss out on that crucial transfer. A narrative review called Iron and Neurodevelopment in Preterm Infants, published in 2021, emphasized that preterm infants are at significantly higher risk of iron deficiency anemia because they are born with reduced iron stores and their rapid growth increases iron demands. The 
next risk group is babies exclusively breastfed beyond six months. Breast milk is the gold standard for nutrition, but it naturally contains very little iron, about 0.2 to 0.4 milligrams per liter. After six months, babies need iron from solids or supplements to keep up with their rapid growth. The 2006 paper titled Mother's Iron Status, Breast Milk Iron and Lactoferrin Are They Related? examined whether a mother's iron levels influence breast milk composition. Researchers divided participants into two groups. Group one, mothers with normal hemoglobin, not anemic. And group two, mothers with low hemoglobin, anemic. They found that breast milk iron levels declined naturally over time in both groups of mothers, regardless of their iron status. More recently, an observational study titled Effect of Infant Feeding's Practices on Iris Status in a Cohort Study of Bolivian Infants, published in 2018, followed infants from around two months of age through six to eight months. The researchers found that by six to eight months, over half of the infants were iron deficient. Three quarters were anemic and nearly half had iron deficiency anemia. Importantly, the longer babies were exclusively breastfed without additional iron sources, the greater their risk of developing low iron status. Another risk group is babies from mothers with low iron in pregnancy. If a mom was iron deficient while pregnant, her baby likely started life with lower iron reserves. The study titled, Iron Deficiency During the First 1,000 Days of Life, Are We Doing Enough to Protect a Developing Brain? concluded that a poor diet before and during pregnancy, along with certain lifestyle and pregnancy related factors, can disrupt the transfer of iron from mother to baby in the womb. Additionally, the study stated that while preterm birth, gestational diabetes, and fetal growth restriction are known risks, newer evidence shows that maternal obesity and cesarean delivery also increase the chance of iron deficiency in newborns, sometimes persisting into early childhood. Here's where the timing problem comes in. In many places, routine screening happens between 9 and 12 months. But by then, a baby could already be anemic or even have developmental impacts from earlier deficiency. The key point is that hemoglobin drops after iron stores are already depleted. By the time a baby's hemoglobin falls below 11, their ferritin may have been low for months. That means relying on hemoglobin testing alone often catches iron deficiency too late when it's already progressed to anemia and may be impacting growth and brain development. At birth, cord ferritin levels should be checked in all high-risk babies such as those born preterm or to mothers with gestational diabetes babies who had growth restrictions in the womb, or other known risk factors. Between four and six months, all infants should be screened for both ferritin and hemoglobin to prevent iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia and to ensure appropriate iron dosing. This is also critical if supplementation is already being given. Too little iron doesn't solve the problem, but too much iron can actually be harmful causing oxidative stress and even long-term metabolic issues. That's why testing, not guessing, is key. There is a saying in Brazil, é melhor prevenir do que remediar, which uh, translates to, it's better to prevent than to remedy. 
When it comes to iron, early action is the difference between keeping up and playing catch up. Parents, doctors, and healthcare providers should not wait for symptoms to appear before testing. By that point, hemoglobin is already affected and iron stores are depleted, meaning the deficiency is advanced, not early. Our responsibility is not only to treat illness, but to safeguard development before it's at risk. And with iron deficiency, the earlier we act, the stronger the foundation we give our children for a healthier future. Thank you for listening to Health Investigations. If you found this episode helpful, please subscribe and share with someone who would benefit. Until next time, stay critical, stay proactive, and stay healthy.